Hello, old school comics review. Okay, today I wanted to talk about uh Deathlock Demolisher, Astonishing Tales from the mid seventies. Uh but first I wanted to bring up um some of the other Deathlock co- uh comics I've got here. Um I was never a super, super big fan of Deathlock. I was always aware of the character, but it just wasn't that into it, even though I kinda like the premise and things. I had like maybe one or two like uh appearances from back in the old days. And then I know in the 80s, he showed up a few times. I know there's that famous Captain America cover where Deathlock's kind of uh, facing the reader. And then in the gun sights, you see a reflection of Captain America. Uh, but I really, well, I'll just say recently, just got interested in the character again. I have here the first issue, the most recent version of Deathlock. It's the first issue of the Marvel Knights Deathlock the Demolisher miniseries. It's written by Charlie Houston and the artist by Dan Medina. It's a seven-issue uh, miniseries, and it's kind of a, a reimagining of the old 70s version. It's uh, set in the near future, and the main character is um, Luther Manning, who gets turned into a cyborg, and his main nemesis is a guy named Riker. Uh, basically, in this setting, uh, war and death is pretty much treated as a spectator sport. There's betting, there's lots of media coverage, and you have uh, suit and tie guys in the elite um, basically um, you know, using war as sport. And um, it's pretty interesting. Uh, there's kind of some black humor, kind of some satire going on. It's an uh, idea that's been used a lot of times over the last maybe, you know, 20 or 30 years in various science fiction movies and novels and things like that. Uh, but it's not badly done. It's pretty interesting. I also have... Um, the first issue of the ongoing Deathlock series from the early 90s. This is by uh, Dwayne McDuffie and Denny Cohen uh, did the art. I was not aware of this comic back in the uh, 90s. I wasn't reading a whole lot of like Marvel comics, uh, or at least not not a lot of Marvel superhero comics, and it just passed me by. I had no idea of it. The whole reason I got interested in it again or interested in it is, or aware of it, I should say, is because I got interested in the works of uh, Dwayne McDuffie. I went to his website, and they mentioned some of the other things he's done, and this was on there, so that got me interested in it. Uh, the premise here is slightly different. It's set in contemporary times, and it's a different person. It's a guy named uh, Mike Collins, and the idea is uh, he's a company man. He's uh, an inventor or whatnot. He's an inventor, he's a scientist, and he thinks he's doing humanitarian work. And then he finds out that the uh, corrupt guys at the corporation he works for is, are using his inventions and ideas to uh, build killer cyborg robots. Uh, he goes to turn in his boss, who is incidentally again named Riker, and... Um, you know, he gets set up, and they put his brain into one of the robot bodies, into one of the cyborg bodies, and they think they're going to control him. However, his consciousness uh, kind of takes over, so the, I guess the, I don't know what word I want to use here. The interesting dilemma is, here he is, he's a man of peace or whatever, he's a humanitarian, he's a nice guy, but he's in the body of a cyborg killer. Um, now, I think in between the uh, early 90s version and the version they just came out with now, I think there's been a couple other death locks. I know there was um, there was one thing that was called death lock that really wasn't death lock. It was really the Doug Ramsey and Warlock character from the New Mutants and uh, Excalibur, but for whatever reason, they decided to just call it Deathlock. I don't know if that's just, you know, Marvel trying to hang on to the uh, trademark name or what. And I think um, there also might have been another version, I'm not 100% sure on that, somebody can, like, enlighten me, where they used another contemporary version of Deathlock, which I guess was a different guy who was more of an ambiguous character, maybe was kind of a pseudo-bad guy. I'm not too sure. Like I said, somebody, you know, educate me, please. Okay, now, I have this thing here, which is uh, what I really wanted to talk about. This is Astonishing Tales, number 28, featuring Deathlock the Demolisher. This was published in 1974. And uh, it was written and drawn by Rich Buckler. Rich Buckler did a lot of work for Marvel Comics back in the mid to late 70s. I don't know what he's up to these days. Um 
Well, basically, this is back to uh, being Luther Manning. He's a soldier. It's the near future. He's a soldier. He gets set up by a corrupt general named Riker. Riker turns him into a killer cyborg, but uh, Luther Manning's able to, um, uh, you know, regain a little bit of his dignity and a little bit of his humanity. And basically, that's kind of what the series seems to be about. He's trying to hang on to his humanity while at the same time fighting uh, rogue arguments and and getting. Um, get even with Riker. Uh, the uh, one of the interesting things is um, he has a computer that's uh, attached to him that he's able to communicate with. That's able to analyze various situations and feed him information and kind of help him out on his uh, journey or whatever. But um, you know, there's lots of action in here. But uh, what's interesting is well, there's a few interesting things in here. It's it's a really funky, funky little mid-70s comic book. It's not particularly groundbreaking or anything like that, but it is kind of fun. The full title is 5 to 1 Deathlock, 1 in 5, No One Here Gets Out Alive, which is uh, it's basically a reference to an old Doors song, if you know your old uh, classic rock. Matter of fact, later on in the comic, Deathlock's walking down the street, and there's graffiti on the wall that has even more um, lyrics from that particular song. Um, a lot of it is Deathlock being in angst and tortured. You know, oh, I'm an inhuman monster. I can't go back to my wife. I can't go back to my son. And then there's lots of scenes of uh, evil General Riker just kind of gloating and scheming his schemes and uh, making crazy, you know proclamations and things like that um he's there's a scene here where uh, the Riker where Riker has got some woman tied up and she's hooked up to some machine and he's evidently using her for some weird experiments that are going to show up a little bit later then we cut to here's uh here's Luther Manning here's Deathlock finding an old book of Frankenstein and it's all dusty and he dusts it off and then he reads it and then he rips it apart because he's in so much angst because he's a monster, just like the Frankenstein monster is a monster. And uh, it's pretty, uh, <laughs> it's pretty fun. Um, there's lots of uh, the art is not um, not terribly sophisticated, but it is interesting. There's lots of things uh, where it looks like Rich has tried to like experiment around with uh, layouts and things like that. On the two middle two page spread, you have to kind of turn it sideways where it's laid out almost like a Sunday comic strip. And that's something that was not done a whole lot in the uh, mid-'70s. I know during the 80s a few different comic book writers have done it, and I think it was used a bit in the uh, 90s, you know, during the big image boom where people, like, you know, have big giant pinups and things that you have to turn sideways and whatnot. Um, but uh, like I said, it's a fun comic book. Um, like I said, it's basically... Uh, Luther being pissed off, then he fights rogue armies, and he fights these uh, mercenaries and things like that, and it ends on a cliffhanger where some tank is about to run him, and another guy who's turning, who's a little bit sympathetic to uh, Luther Manning's cause. Okay, um, I don't think these comics are too expensive. Um... You know, just look around in your brick and mortar store, get them offline. Um, I want to get a few more of these. I also want to eventually um, do a comparison between this, a similar thing that came out from DC Comics, which was Jack Kirby's version of OMAC, which is another future story with a guy who talks to a computer that helps him out, and then compare those to a comic book called Trash Man, which was by, it was an underground comics by a guy named Spain, Spain Rodriguez, which again, two-fisted mercenary guy fighting the system with a computer helping, helping him out. Um, okay, so once again, i got to thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, give me any feedback. Check out my blue blog. Uh, thanks, and have a good one.